subhanallah, that the great blessing that we have of Eid, and the great blessing of Dhul Hijjah, and the great blessing of Al Islam, La ilaha illallah, the great blessing to know La ilaha illallah, the great blessing to know Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that in this time, this is a time of supreme tawbah. This is a time of universal cosmic tawbah. Tawbah is repentance. Tawbah is to turn back to Allah in a state of penitence, in a state of humble surrender and apology and seeking the forgiveness of the Almighty. And that our beloved Prophet وسلم, is recorded to have said in the authentic hadith, Man hajja falam yarfuth wa lam yafsuk raja'aka yawmin wa ladathu ummuhu That whoever performs the hajj and is not indecent, rude, discourteous to people, lam yarfuth, nor commits any sin or disobedience, wa lam yafsuk Then when they return home, they return as it were like the day their mother gave birth to them. Reflect on the miracle of Hajj. Reflect on the miracle of hundreds and thousands and into the millions, perhaps two, three, Allahu Alam, how many million of Muslims, of believers following the way of Nabi Ibrahim, peace be upon him, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, who culminates and presents the, tr the true Abrahamic monotheism and the Millah, the Deen, the way, the religion of Ibrahim, reflect from all corners of the earth, north, south, east, and west, as far as one can imagine, all ethnicities, all races, all colors, the brilliant tapestry of Allah's creation manifested in human beings of all social st statuses, social strata, of different dis with all the disparity of wealth versus poverty, and every other category of human difference that embeds our lived experience, whether real or imposed upon humanity, despite all of that, all sharing in one cosmic meaning, one universal meaning, Glorifying the name of Allah Almighty, glorifying the name of God Almighty, following the footsteps of prophets and prophets, peace be upon them, from the time of Abraham, Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Hajj is a mysterious way of transacting with the Divine. If we reflect on the actual acts of the Hajj, it doesn't necessarily fit the cognitive, rational categories of the intellect in the sense of going here first and then going there and make you have to be there for a certain time and then you go here and then you have to be here for a certain time. It begins with the, the uh, adorning, entering the state of ihram, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, and then the tawaf around the Kaaba, seven rounds, and then going to Arafah, and Arafah and, and the Sa'i between Safa and Marwa and then going to Arafah on the 9th of the Hijjah and that is as the Prophet taught us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Hajj Arafah, Hajj is the Arafah and waiting until Dhuhr then combining Dhuhr and Asr and then making Istighfar and begging Allah Ta'ala for his forgiveness and his mercy all the way to Maghrib but then you're not allowed to pray Maghrib in Arafah you must go to Muzdalifah and even though the sun will set and it'll be late in the night and as one relative of mine reached out to me this Hajj because they had a quick question they had to ask but that they said they had to go 17 hours before they could use the restroom even because of just the sheer crowdedness and we're exposed to all sorts of things just imagine any other group of people that large of a crowd what, what maintains that balance? what's that mysterious divine grace? such that it all works, it all works out. And everyone is in a state of worship, of recognition of Allah. And somehow there's a 
alchemical, strange, mysterious, wondrous transaction with the divine such that they come back completely purified of all sins. And people who might have lived decades of their life uh, in heedlessness and not thinking, not cognizant, not pursuing the path of the prophets, of the path of piety, they come back completely changed and reformed. The mystery of this place, the mystery of this act of worship, the worship of a lifetime, la ilaha illallah, and that even the some of the symbolic meanings, because the tawaf is a mysterious thing, it reflects the heavens, the macro and the micro, orbit, the idea of the orbit, that we have orbits in the heavens, and that then the scientists tell us that the deeper we go into the world of atoms, the atomic world, it's all orbits, electrons around the nucleus, as above, so below. However grand we look, however microscopic we go down, well, we, in it, we enact that same symphony of the cosmos. It's all glorifying Allah Ta'ala. And there's something mysterious about even the physics behind the orbit, because it's a balance of forces, the centripetal and the centrifugal forces. That the Kaaba, without any anthropomorphic in implication in this, but symbolically it, it reminds us of Allah, so it represents the Divine Presence. But we're not meant to be completely plunged into the Divine Presence. We're not disembodied souls that just are completely in a state of dhikr, remembrance of Allah the whole time. No, we are embedded in the world. We are thrown into the world. We have to live in the world. But then we cannot be in the world distracted and heedless of Allah Ta'ala. The Qur'anic invitation is to live in the world, but the heart is with Allah. So the mystery of the tawaf, that whatever the coordinates of our lives, time, space, life, circumstance, stage of life, child, teenager, uh, uh, young adult, old adult, whatever the stage of life we're in, whatever coordinate we are vis-a-vis -vis the Kaaba, the orientation is to the Kaaba. The orientation of the heart is to Allah, but we're in the world. So the Sirat al-Mustaqim, this idea of being in the world, but being on the straight path, balanced. The balance between fully in the world, but fully with Allah Ta'ala. And then the mystery of Arafah, it's called Arafah, it's a strange name, because Arafah is related to Ma'rifah, Gnosis or knowledge of Allah. And this is why Primarily, fundamentally, why Allah Ta'ala created us in the first place. And Mujahid, the student of Ibn Abbas, the Mufassir par excellence of our Ummah, his great student said, As our ulama mentioned in the books of Tafsir, that I have not created jinn kind nor mankind save to worship me, i.e. save to know me. Because through our worship of Allah, we come to know Allah. Who knows Allah better than the pilgrims on Arafah? They don't have a moment on that day where they're forgetting Allah. La ilaha illallah. And so Arafah is literally the locus of Ma'rifah. And so we have to take these, these meanings on in our lives today and every day. Every day we have to perform a hajj as it were in our hearts. Every day we have to be oriented to Allah while we're living in the world. Every day we should be committed to knowing Allah more. And Allah Ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly showing himself to us through his names and attributes that reflect on the, the dhikr, the whole time of hajj is dhikr of Allah. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, at your service time and time again. Labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik, after the hajj, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. And our Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Sahih al-Bukhari, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ Or كَمَا قَالُ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the example of the one that remembers his Lord, compared to the one that does not remember his Lord, is the example of the living and the dead. So to give life to our hearts through the mundane of the world, through the vicissitudes of our lives, through the circumstances, through the struggles, through the challenges, through the trials and tribulations, to be people of remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. That is a fundamental meaning of the Hajj. And this is called Qunut, with the Ta, Qunut, 
to be utterly devoted to Allah, irrespective of our life circumstances, whatever stage of life we're at, to be utterly devoted to Allah. And this is the description of the great patriarch that we remember on this day, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him. Inna Ibrahim, Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. Verily, Abraham was an entire nation unto himself. He was an ummah in and of himself. Some of them say because he was the only monotheist of his time. Some of them say, peace be upon him. Some of them say because ummah means imam. In the ja'iluka nasi imama in Baqarah. Allah says to Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he received the covenant, the, 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 uh, kalimatin, fa'atamahunna, the, the revelation and his sharia, and he fulfilled those sub- sublime, divine words. In, uh, what did Allah Ta'ala say to him? In nasi imama, I shall make you an exemplar till time, for time immemorial, for all nations. An exemplar for all peoples. And it's culminated through our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that he, he was an entire, so others say because Ummah, because he, get, he, Allah Ta'ala put placed in Ibrahim virtues, all the virtues that normally are distributed in a community. Normally, all the virtues that are dis- distributed in a community, in an ummah, they were all can gathered in the person of Ibrahim alayhi salam. In Ibrahim akana ummah, he was an entire nation unto himself. And Allah Ta'ala says in the, in the other ayah, inna Ibrahim halimun, la halimun awah munib. Verily, Abraham was Hanim. Hanim, this is the most fundamental of all the virtues emanate from Hanim. Clemency and forbearance. The ability to control oneself. The ability to take, to control the ego, the egotistical tendencies of the nafs. That capacity. He was Hanim. And Allah Ta'ala describes him, Allah, soft-hearted, tender-hearted. Munib, always turning back to Allah Ta'ala. Constantly, just like the pilgrim making the tawaf, always oriented to the Kaaba. All Munib is someone always going back to Allah Ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. And back to the ayah in Nahal, inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillah. Verily, Ibrahim was an entire nation unto himself of virtue, and he was devoted solely to Allah in complete devotion. Hanifa, the Hanif is someone always inclining to truth, always inclining to virtue, always inclining to the divine, which in, entails both intellectual virtue and moral virtue. And the prophets, all of them, and certainly the great Supreme Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him, that he manifested the intellectual virtues and the moral virtues. So the intellectual virtues, because every time he met People of disbelief, people of tyranny, people of corruption, people of paganism. He used reason. He used argument. He was able to convince them rationally. That's a prophetic teaching. So the virtues are not just the moral virtues, but they're also the intellectual virtues. We as a community, we need to revive both. We have a lot of focus on the moral virtues and a lot of our discourse, but do we have enough focus on the intellectual virtues? Our ulama were masters of logic and rhetoric, what are called the liberal arts. Imam al-Ghazali, read about Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah. He wrote at least four books on logic. One of them was, was 450 pages in the Arabic edition that I have, Ilm, the criterion of knowledge. He was very committed to the intellect. This is a prophetic legacy. Because when, when, when one deals with the tyrant, when one deals with the oppressor, when one deals with the uh, impious, the profligate, it begins by reasoning with them. Commit showing them that they're, it's, they're acting out of ignorance. What did he say when they worship the stars? I don't, I don't love what sets. How can I, how can I devote myself with qunut, with devotion and love to something that's contingent and finite? No, the stars that set are but signs of the creator of the stars. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, because he's Hanif, he is a monotheist par excellence, peace be upon him, he had nothing to do with shirk. Even as a young boy, when Azar, 
the idol maker, who he said, Ya Abati, and many of the scholars of Tafsir say it was his paternal uncle, because the lineage of our Prophet was all monotheists. And in Arabic, you can call your paternal uncle Ab, Ya Abati. Even from a, as a young boy, he was, he was, his environment was one of corruption and paganism. He was so intelligent. So he used logic to show them the big one did it. How can the big one do it? Well, then why are you worshipping the big one? Why are you worshipping them if they can't even break each other? Why, why, why do you worship something that sets? No, rather, the stars are a proclamation of the glory of the creator of stars. Everything in the cosmos is an ayah, tadullu ala annuhu wahid, indicating that Allah is one. Everything that's finite and contingent, changeable, whether the orbit of the heavens or the orbit of the atoms, the cells of our body, they're all wondrous signs indicating the glory of Allah Ta'ala. Badi'u samawati wal ard the one who is so wondrous in his creation. And this is the teaching of the Prophet all of them together. Reflect and get to know Allah in all of his glory. Recognize his names and attributes. Realize the, the wonder, the miracle of life, the miracles of life. Every day is a miracle. Every day he is engaged directly in an affair. Every cell of our body is a miracle. Every organ that's functioning is a miracle. Every baby that's born is a miracle. Every day of our lives is a miracle. Every relationship in society is a miracle. Every interaction of human beings is a miracle. Every encounter we have is, an, is, is a miracle. Every time we step outside, the sun rising, it's not likely. It's not likely for the sun to rise. It's not likely for the moon to be there at night. It's not likely for us to exist. What's likely is non-existence. What's likely is non-existence. If everything were left in and of itself, it would cease to exist. So why is it there? Because la ilaha illahu, Allahu la ilaha illahu, al hayyul qayyum. Because Allah is real, and there's no god but Allah, and He is the one with true life who sustains everything in existence. Al qayyum. Aqulu qabihada wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum astaghfirullah. In Allah Rafur Rahim. <تصفيق> الحمد لله وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا Those that do not see the signs of Allah What does Allah Ta'ala say about them? In Surah Al-A'raf Allah Ta'ala states سأصرف عن آياتي الذين يتكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق. I shall divert away from my glorious signs those who are proud and arrogant on earth without any due right. وإن يروا كل آية لا يؤمن بها. And even if they see every single sign, every wondrous indication of the divine, they shall never believe in those. They shall not believe in them. If they see the path of righteousness, of virtue, they shall not take the path of virtue. But if they see the path of impiety and vice and corruption, then they take that path. That is because they deny our signs. And they are utterly heedless and unaware of them. This is the state of the proud, the haughty, the arrogant. Allah Ta'ala, the signs are never absent, but their hearts are blind. They cannot see the signs. So asrifu, Allah Ta'ala says, I shall divert away such people from my signs. What's their salient quality? What's the characteristic of the blind, deaf, and dumb? Those whose hearts are sealed from the truth. Those who can never take the path of virtue. Those who always go down the path of vice. What's their salient characteristic? They are proud and haughty on earth without any justification, without any due right. This is the state of the tyrant. This is the state of the corrupt. 
This is a state. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in these beautiful stories of the Prophet there's the, there's also the Nimrod in the story of Ibrahim salam. There's also the Fir'aun in the story of Musa and Harun salam. There's also the Abu Jahl and the Abu Lahab and the Umay Umayyah bin Khalaf and all the rest of the gang, the gangsters and the banksters of Quraysh that our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallam, had to deal with in Mecca. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Jahl, Fir'aun hadir Ummah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Jahl is the Pharaoh of this Ummah. What does that mean? That means Fir'aun was not only a true historical figure that we have knowledge of in the Quran Kareem, but he's also an archetype, a paradigm, a way of living that shall be repeated in the human story. Every community will have the Nimrod and the Fir'aun and the Abu Jahl. And we have plenty of them today. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. The Nimrods and the Pharaohs and the Abu Jahls, they are raining corruption on the earth. They are proud and haughty on the earth. They are tyrannical on the earth, destroying the lives of innocent people, destroying the lives of civilians in Gaza, destroying the lives of civilians in Sudan, destroying the lives of civilians, innocent people in Kashmir, the innocent Muslims, the Rohingya Muslims, the Uyghur Muslims in China, all of these, and the, and the, unfortunately, with tears in our eyes, the list goes on and on. The, the tyrannical causes of the famine crisis in Yemen, all of this tyranny on the earth, all of the pharaohs who help, the pharaohs who commit the atrocities, and the pharaohs who enable it, and who fund it, and the, and all the, corporations, the military, industrial complex, and all the weapons industries that further it and further it and further it. Every time there's a path of rushed for them to stop the harm, to stop the tyranny, to do something, uh, uh, even a few drops of virtue. They don't take that path. But whenever they see another path of غي, of of vicious tyrannical behavior, they take that path. These are the proud and haughty on earth. They have no haq. They have no right. And what's the fate of every pharaoh? What's the fate of every Nimrod? What's the fate of every Abu Jahan? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Every single human being is the property of Allah. We belong to Allah, and we have to go back to Allah, and they have to go back to Allah. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi as Ibn Abdullah ibn Umar, the great companion and son of the companion Umar ibn Khattab, he relates this hadith in Ibn Majah that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi was once giving the khutbah, and he said. يأخذ الجبار سماواته وأرضه بيده وقبض وقبض بيده فجعل يقبضها يفسدها ثم يقول أنا الجبار أين الجبارون أين المتكبرون قال رضي الله عنه ويتميل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن يمينه وعن يساره حتى نظرت إلى المنبر يتحرك من أسفل شيء منه حتى إني أقول أسعفده هو برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقد ذس حديث the beloved best of creation وسلم, was once giving a khutbah and Ibn Umar says that the Prophet said Allah Ta'ala who is Al-Jabbar that's one of the divine names the Almighty, the true Almighty the one who has the right to demonstrate his might Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala La ilaha illallah that he shall take the entire cosmos in his omnipotent grasp and he shall say I am the Al-Jabbar I am the true Almighty where are the Jabbarun? Where are the Mutakabirun today? Where are all the Abu Jahads of history? Where are all the Pharaohs of history? Where are all the Nimrods of history? Where are the Abu Lahabs of history whose very names are related to fire because they fan the flames of fire in society. They fan the flames of war in society. Where are they today? And the best of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was, he was so overwhelmed with that state of re re reflecting on the majesty of Allah Ta'ala that he was his beloved body swaying right and left that Ibn Umar says I was scared the mimbar would collapse this is the fate of every tyrant this is the fate of every Abu Lahab this is the fate of every Nimrod 
And so go back to the Qur'an. If we want to understand the world, if we want to decode the signs of the world, the signs on the horizons and the signs of the lived human experience, everything is in the Qur'an. Everything is delineated in the Qur'an. Our Prophet ﷺ was sent with the supreme scripture, Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. It has every single thing we could ask for and more. La ilaha illallah. Fihi shifa'un wa rahmatun lil It's a healing and a mercy for the believers. وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارَةً But the Qur'an, it increases tyrants in nothing but utter loss. Utter loss. We ask Allah Ta'ala to relieve the Ummah from the tyrants. We ask Allah Ta'ala to end the genocide in the Holy Land. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bring about peace and security for all innocent people in all lands of the earth. All innocent people of all walks of life, of all religions, of all ethnicities, of all colors, of all everything. We ask Allah Ta'ala to restore peace and safety and security for humanity at large. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka iman and da'ima. Oh Allah, we ask you for faith forever. Wa nas'aluka qalman khashia. We ask you for a reverent heart. Wa nas'aluka ilman nafia. We ask you for beneficial knowledge. Wa nas'aluka yaqeenan sadiqa. We ask you for certainty and truth. Wa nas'aluka deenan qayyima. We ask you for a valuable and upright religious practice. Wa nas'aluka ya Allah al-afiyah min kulli baliya. And we ask you, Ya Allah, for well-being from every single affliction. When as'aluka tamam al-afiyah, we ask you, Ya Allah, for complete well-being. When as'aluka dawam al-afiyah, we ask you, Ya Allah, for perpetual, persistent well-being. When as'aluka, Ya Allah, shukra al-afiyah, we ask you, Ya Allah, for true gratitude for the well-being that you grant us. When as'aluka al-ghina al-nas, we ask you, Ya Allah, to be free from needing people. Allahumma inna as'aluka tawbat al-kamila, we ask you for complete repentance. Wa maghfirat al-shamila and a complete and overwhelming forgiveness. When as'aluka al-mahabbat al-jami'ah, unifying love. When khullat al-safiyah, pure-hearted intimacy. When ma'rifat al-wasi'ah, all-embracing gnosis. When anwar al-safiyah, resplendent illuminations. When shafa'at al-qa'imah, a standing intercession. When hujjat al-bariqa, a decisive case. When darajat al-aliyah, and an exalted rank. وَفُقْتُ وَثَاقَنَا مِنَ الْمَعْسِيَةِ And free us from the shackles of disobedience. وَرِهَانَنَا مِنْ نِقْبَةِ بِمَوَاهِبِ الْمِنَّةِ Or remaining in, and free us from the shackles of disobedience or remaining in pawn to blessings. اللَّهُمَ إِنَّا نَسْأَلُكَ تَوْبَةَ وَدَوَامَهَا O oh Allah, we ask you for repentance and its continuance. وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْمَعْسِيَةِ وَأَسْبَابِهَا And we seek refuge in you from disobedience and its causes. فَذِكِّرْنَا بِالْخَوْفِ مِنْكَ قَبْلَ هُجُومِ خَطَرَاتِهَا So remind us of fear of you before the onslaught of its thoughts. وَحْمِلْنَا عَلَى النَّجَاتِ مِنْهَا وَمِنَ التَّفَكُّرِ فِي تَرَائِقِهَا And carry us to safety from it and from thinking of its paths. وَمْحُ مِنْ قُلُوبِنَا حَلَاوَةَ مَجْتَنَيْنَاهُ مِنْهَا And expunge from our hearts the savor of what we have committed of it. وَاسْتَبْدِلْهَا بِالْكَرَاهَةِ لَهَا وَالْتَعْمِ لِمَا هُوَ بِذُدِّهَا And rechange it to a distaste for it and an appetite for its opposite. وَأَفِدْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ بَحْرِ كَرْمِكْ And pour upon us from the sea of your generosity. وَفَضْلِكْ And your open-handedness. وَجُودِكْ And your bounty. وَعَفْوِكْ And your liberality. حَتَّى نَخْرُجَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَى السَّلَامَةِ مِنْ وَبَارِهَا Until we depart from this world in safety from its dire consequences. وَجَعَلْنَا عِنْدَ الْمُوْتِ نَعْطِقِينَ بِالشَّهَادِتِ عَالِمِينَ بِهَا And make us when we die saying the testification of faith and knowing what it means. اللَّهُمَّ فَرِجْ عَنَّا وَعَنِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي كُنِّ مَكَانَ وَانْصُرْنَا بِالْيَقِينَ وَالتَّوَكُّرِ عَلَيْكَ And give us triumph through certainty and reliance upon you. وَأَسْفِرْ وُجُوهَنَا بِنُورِ سِفَاتِكَ And make our faces resplendent with the light of your attributes. وَأَضْحِكْنَا And make us rejoice. وَبَشِّرْنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And give us good glad tidings on Resurrection Day. بَيْنَ أَوْلِيَائِكْ Amongst your friends. وَجَعْلْ يَدِكَ مَبْسُوطَةً عَلَيْنَا And outspread your hand to us. وَعَلَىٰ أَهْلِينَا And upon our families. وَأَوْلَادِينَا And upon our children. وَمَنْ مَعَنَا And all that are with us. بِرَحْمَتِكَ By your mercy, Ya Allah. وَلَا تَكِدْنَا إِلَىٰ أَنْفُسِنَا تَرْفَةَ عِينٍ وَلَا أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكْ يَا نِعْمَ الْمُجِيبِ يَا نِعْمَ الْمُجِيبِ يَا نِعْمَ الْمُجِيبِ وَسَلِّ لَهُمَا نَسِيدُنَا مُحَمَّدَ الْنَّبِيرُ أُمِّي وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ و